Hello, hello, hello. It's half past three and time for Wednesday's CITV. And our first mission today is to find out what's up over Alphabet Castle. We have liftoff. Is it a castle in the air? Yes, it's a castle in the air. Flags are flying plain to see. See, with old King Alpha and young Queen. In the alphabet. Alphabet Castle, Alphabet Castle, Alphabet Castle, A, B, C. Loop, the loop. Oh dear, it's very difficult keeping up with that plane. Oh, there it goes again. <laughs> Looping the, oh, whoa, look, now it's upside down. Betty, come and have a look at this. The pilot's amazing. I can't, Alpha. I'm too busy. Oh. Oh. And the plane's gone now. What to do? I know. I wish you'd help me. Maybe you can help me. It's as easy as A, B, C. Now, what can you see through the A? some sort of vehicle, isn't it? It's got wheels. It's white with a big red cross. Oh, I think I've got it. It's an ambulance. Hmm. I wonder who it's going to pick up. I hope it's not the pilot. Anyway, time to paint a buff. Oh, now what's that? Flowers. It's not a field, is it? No, there are four short little legs there. That's some sort of a cover, like a duvet. Oh, I know, it's a bed. Ba begins bed. A large cu now, I think. There we go. Now, oh, what's whiskers and eyes? It's a Cat. Cuff begins cat. Of course. Now, I think I'll paint a pup. There we go. Who's that? It's a pilot. And he's walking towards Alphabet Castle. I'll put the kettle on for a spot of tea. <laughs> ah, hello, old bean. Hello. We know who you are. Well, most people do. The name is Pitzhanger. Wing Commander Percy Pinkerton Pitzhanger. You know, they call me the Pits, actually. You know, I've just had the most terrible clothes shave. Oh, that must be the second one. Look at that moustache. Oh, oh, isn't it wonderful? You know, it actually has many uses. It actually doubles as a wizard radio set. You see, I just tweak this a little bit. There you are, and I can talk to the whole world. Come in, France. Come in. Ah, the Palais Francais. Ah, oui, très bien, merci. <laughs> um, come in, Germany. Come in, Germany. That means come in, Germany, dear. Eins, zwei, drei. Mm. Vier, fünf, sex. Yeah. <laughs> Have you been flying long? Ah, oh, ever since I was a little nipper. You know, I used to pretend that I was a plane. It was absolutely wonderful. Oh. Ah, there you see. I have flown planes with three wings, some planes with two wings, and uh, one or two with one. Hmm. In fact, some had none at all. Um, well, I, di I didn't get very far, though. <laughs> uh, but you know what? My greatest moment of all was when I won the London to Paris air race. <laughs> I beat the lot. I beat uh, the Italian, Cesare Romano. 
I beat the German, Fritz Stumpf. I made mincemeat of pâte et de foie gras. <laughs> oh. oh, yes, but, um, they all look very much the same to me. Ah, uh, yes, uh, that's because they're all wearing um, helmets and uh, goggles. But you can tell me, I am the one with the moustache. You see, there, there I am, with the prize. Would you like to hear my victory song? I thought you might. I went up through the clouds. He went up through the clouds. I flew through the air. He flew through the air. I flew through the letters. He flew through the letters. As if they weren't there. As if they weren't there. I flew round an I. He flew round an I. I flew through an O. He flew through an O. I flew through a U. You flew through a U. And a V too. And a V too. I missed all the letters. Of that I can boast. But you were the one who I missed most. Yes, you were the one who I missed most. May I fly too? And I'd love to try on your hat and your goggles. Ah, oh, yes, well... Uh, and the moustache. Oh. oh. Betty, I, I, I thought I'd play a trick on you. <laughs> we knew it was you all the time, King Alpha. What a superb moustache. I really like it. Yes, but it's <laughs> mine, and I like it back. You'll never catch me, Alpha. <laughs> You'll have to run faster than that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Tickles when the wind's blowing. Mm. <sighs> it's flying through the air. Oh, look at it go, Alpha. Up through the clouds. I wonder if I can see it better through my Betty scope. Let's see. Yes, it's flying through the air. Goodness, it's landed on a pig. Whoops, it's taken off again. Oh, no, it's landed on a duck now. Quack, quack. Here we go again, up, up, up. Oh, Alpha, it's flying through the air and it's landed on a frog. All right, all right. <laughs> well, we're going to have to get it back somehow. I know. Alpha, where are you going? just painted that wall. Yes, and it's just right. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> oh, perfect. I mean perfect. Is it a castle in the air? Yes, it's a castle in the air. Flags are flying, plain to see. Alphabet castle A, B, C. Alphabet castle. Poot, speak to me. <laughs> I must have a virus. Uh, 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 oh, oh Poot, do not worry. I'll help you. Uh, I hope. Is Wizardora back yet? No, I wish she'd hurry. Is Wizardora there? No, she's not back yet. Oh, well, if she's not back soon, I'm going to start worrying about my tomatoes. I'm already worrying about Poot. And Nigel. And my trifle. Oh. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hiya, Stan. Uh, yeah. Ah! <coughs> Hello and good morning, Pippa. Stan, are you all right? May I help you? Mm -hmm. Want to tell me what's going on? Well, I'm practising being nice to my customers. But you're nice just as you are. Yes, but well, I want to be nicer. Well, good luck. Oh. This one looks like a book. Yeah. Ah, all right. I've been expecting this 
Uh, this is the one at last. Mm, <laughs> it is a book. Yeah. What's it about? How to be nice to your customers. Mm. Oh, hello, you lot. Have you ever carried a lot of books from the library? Aren't they heavy? That's because they're filled with information. And stories. <laughs> yes, Nigel. Well, the book I want is full of information about how to cook a trifle. Now, may I please have it, Wizardora? Yes, Hangle. Don't be in such a hurry. Right, trifles made easy. I certainly hope so. Here, Phoebe. Ah, caring for a sick computer. Oh, thank you, Wizardora. Put, help is on the way. Very old fish, here's your book of great racing stories. Oh, oh thank you, Wizardora. Yeah, have you got that? Yes, Tatty, I've got your Growing Bigger Tomatoes oh, book. Thank you. Wait till you see the size of my tomatoes now. <laughs> now, I can read my Bottling Potions book. <laughs> Wizardora, what about our book? Oh, yes, sorry, I nearly forgot you draw people. <laughs> Tricky tricks and jokey jokes. I'm not sure you should have this. <laughs> oh, please, Wizardora. We only want to read it. Yes, well, just make sure that's all you do. <laughs> <laughs> Zoom went the first racing car. Whiz went the second. Oh, it's so exciting. Read it again. Invisible doorbell ringer. Invisible? Oh, how can we see it if it's invisible? It's not really invisible, you noodle brain. It's a trick. Oh, joy. I just love cookbooks. This is going to be the best trifle ever. <sighs> I wish I'd read these instructions properly. Now I've mixed the potion all wrong. I'm just going to have to go all the way to Stan's and get some more ingredients. What a terrible mix-up. <laughs> Right. Stir once to the left and uh, twice to the right. Clap your hands with all your might. Well, this is a strange recipe. Well, <laughs> ah, so far, so bad. Yeah, I mean, good. Hmm. Now, water the tomato plants. Mm -hmm. Point finger at plant. And say, boobity woobity zow. Boobity woobity zow. Well, that's what it says in the book, Filbert, so it must be true. Here goes. Boobity woobity zow. <laughs> Pencil attached to string. Chuck. String attached to spring. Chuck. String through pulley. Check. Then, what are we waiting for? Pull the string. Who can that be? Always look the customer in the eye. Hm. Right. Touch your nose, waggle your ear, say hello with a great big cheer. Well, that seems a strange instruction. Oh, well, here goes. <coughs> hello. Ah, oh, seems easy enough. Well, if that's what the good book says, I'll just... Hello, Stan. <laughs> Are you all right, Stan? Oh, I've been turned into a clown. to this stupid door again. There's never anybody here. <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> hey, hey, ah, back, back. Tippity tap, give a wave, enter and shift, and then press save. <laughs> 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 Busily bee, busily boo, or touch your heads and yell, Achoo! <laughs> hey? 
That's what the book says here. So let's do it. Mm. Oh. Beep, 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 beep. I just don't understand it. All I did was beep, read beep. zoom, zoom, zickety zoom, send him beep, zipping beep. round the room. Oh. <laughs> Stand place. <laughs> Hello, Phoebe. Oh, the place has gone mad. Where's the door of the place? Phoebe, I think this may be my fault. I think I accidentally made my wand do a naughty mix-up spell. Look, can you hold your receiver out? <laughs> Wizardy growl and wizardy purr put things back to the way they were. Ah, ah, ah oh, I'm me again. <laughs> Wore himself out at last. Where'd it go? <laughs> oh, the excitement must have cured him. I'm sorry I let the mix-up spell loose, everyone, but I've bought us all some pizza, and then we can read our books. And uh, this time, read yours more carefully before you use it, Wizardora. <laughs> <laughs> Wizardora, Wizardora. we could make ourselves into a band and play him birthday music. It's old man's birthday. Next. Hi, I'm Charlie Checks and I'm a rabbit, right? Right. I just crunch carrots, right? Right. Wrong. Now I crunch these as well. New checks from Weedabix. Extremely crunchy cages of frosted corn. In a word, checks a land. <laughs> <laughs> New frosted and crunchy nut checks. Checks a land or what? Think of the taste, which opens up the goodness of the country and captures the memory of how mature cheese used to taste. Cathedral City, the full flavor of mature cheddar cheese. And it's packed in many sizes. Cathedral City. For those who know their cheddar. Shake a leg, leg. Today's the day. You're not going anywhere till you wash your hair and wash your face. Go on, stop. Never gonna make it. I suppose this must be France. Have you got the tickets? I thought you had them. They're in our bag. That's the turning. We missed it. Get a great lad. We're almost there. Made it. Well done, bud. Someone you know. Can't wait to go. Disneyland Paris. Ready break. It's ready for anything. Coming up this afternoon on CITV, there's a game of hide and tweet. The Sylvester in cartoon time. Then a disagreement breaks out between those two lovely lupines, bro and bro, when they decide to clean up their act and become window cleaners. There is, however, nothing clean about these three gentlemen who are planning a kidnap, an act they may well regret in Wolf. That's later. Now, old Bear is about to get even older. Please read us a story, old bear. We'll all gather round. Dear old bear, sit in your favorite chair. We'll sit.
it all around, all around dear old bear. It was still very early. The little bear woke to the sound of someone singing. Somebody sounds happy, he said to himself. I wonder who it is. He reached under the pillow to where his trousers were hidden. I'll get dressed and look for the others, he muttered. I wonder why they're up so early. Little bear found Bramwell first. He was busy in the kitchen making buns. He'd made lots and lots and was carefully arranging them on a wire rack to cool down. Oh, said Little Bear, those look lovely. Are they for breakfast? I'm afraid not, said Bramwell. They're for Old Bear. What, all of them? Well, I expect he'll want to share them, said Bramwell. It's his birthday today. Oh, I'd forgotten, said Little Bear. Do you know where he is? He's in the bathroom getting ready, said Bramwell. I think he wants to look his best. Little Bear found the other toys on the landing, crowded round the bathroom door. The singing was coming from inside. It's Old Bear, explained Rabbit. We're waiting to wish him a happy birthday. But we haven't got him a present, said Jolly sadly. Because we didn't remember it was his birthday until this morning. And there isn't even time to make him something now grumbled Duck. Rabbit looked thoughtful. There is something we could give him, he said. Old Bear is in a musical mood. Perhaps we could make ourselves into a band and play him birthday music. Oh, wonderful, cried Little Bear. I've always wanted to be in a band. Rabbit looked round at the toys. We'd need more musicians, he said, and some instruments to play. I know where there are some bells, said Jolly. We could shake those to make music. The bells were in the toy box. Camel and Jolly wanted to try them out, so Little Bear and Rabbit were busy threading them onto strings. They looped one set of bells over Jolly's horns and the other one round Camel's humps. Ruff, Zebra and Dog came over when they heard the bells jingling. That sounds lovely, said Zebra. I want to make music too. I'm not jingling all over the place, muttered Duck. What instrument can I play? Well, we've got one xylophone and one drum, said Little Bear. But if we look in the kitchen, there are all sorts of things there to shake, rattle and bang. Sailor was the first to arrive in the kitchen and he went straight to a pile of saucepans. Saucepan lids, he said, make very good cymbals. But when he tried to pull one from the bottom of the pile, all the saucepans came tumbling down on top of him. Oh dear, he said, as Duck and Little Bear helped him escape. I think these are too big. I'll try the ones from the doll's house. As soon as he'd gone, Ruff bounced over to Little Bear with a funnel on his nose. Rabbit said this would make music, but nothing happens. He took a deep breath and blew into the wide end of the funnel. <laughs> That's because you're blowing in the wrong end, said Little Bear. Try it this way round. Ruff blew into the other end. Lovely, said Little Bear, just like a trumpet. At that moment, a very loud noise made them both jump. They turned round to see Rabbit with a tin tray propped up against the wall. He was banging it hard with a wooden spoon. It's a bit loud, said Little Bear. We won't be able to hear the other instruments. Rabbit thought for a moment and then pulled an oven glove out of the drawer and slipped it over the end of the spoon. He banged the tray again. This time it went very softly. That's much better, said Little Bear. Now I wonder where Duck is. He found Duck standing in front of a fork that was hanging from a chair by a piece of string. Do you like it? said Duck proudly. It's very clever, said Little Bear. Duck picked up a spoon and hit the fork. It only does one note at the moment, he explained. When I add some more, I'll be able to play a whole tune. He finished tying string to a knife and a spoon. Then Jolly, with his bells still jingling, came over to help hang them up. There, said Jolly. Now try all three notes. Duck played each one in turn. 
Then he ran his spoon along the row. That's almost as good as my bells, said Jolly. Soon everyone began to gather in the kitchen with their instruments. They were just about to begin their first band practice when Bramwell arrived. We are going to play some special music for Old Bear's birthday, explained Little Bear. How lovely, said Bramwell. I'm just going to get my buns. Old Bear will be coming down soon. Sailor climbed onto a biscuit tin and banged together the doll's house saucepan mats. Jolly and Camel jingled their bells while Duck tinged his cutlery. Dog thumped on the toy drum while Ruff went toot toot on his trumpet. And Rabbit banged his tea tray gong and tried not to bump Zebra, who was busy with the xylophone. Then, all of a sudden, they stopped and looked at Little Bear. He'd been so busy helping everyone else, he'd forgotten to find an instrument for himself. But Little Bear was staring at Sailor's biscuit tin. Just a minute, he said, hurrying away. I've had an idea. He returned a moment later with two paintbrushes and a bunch of ribbons. Do you mind if I use your tin as a big bass drum? Of course not, said Sailor, jumping down from the tin. But it doesn't look much like a drum. It will when I've decorated it, said Little Bear, wrapping the ribbons round and round the drum. When he'd finished, he lifted it up on its side and began to beat it with his paintbrushes. Then he stopped. It's not as loud as I thought it would be, he grumbled. If it were any louder, you wouldn't hear my knives and forks, muttered Duck. They all joined in with Little Bear. The toys played at the same time didn't really seem to be a tune. Stop, cried Rabbit. We need a conductor, so we know when to start and finish. Let's ask Bramwell. Bramwell was peering into the back of a cupboard. What are you doing? asked Little Bear. I'm looking for the buns, said Bramwell. When they were cool, I put them in something and now they've vanished. Oh no, cried Little Bear. That's awful. But please, Bramwell, we need you to conduct our band. I'll help you find the buns later. Picking up a pencil, Bramwell went to stand in front of the band. One, two, three, four. The musicians began to play just as Old Bear came through the door. He looked very smart. He brushed his fur and was wearing a beautiful bow tie with a new red waistcoat. The band was playing a loud birthday march Old Bear strode up and down in time to the music. Wonderful, cried Old Bear. That was the best birthday surprise ever. I had some other surprises for you, said Bramwell sadly, but I'm afraid I can't find them. I'll come and look, said Little Bear, putting down his brushes to follow Bramwell. But with no one there to steady it, the drum began to roll. Oh no, cried Little Bear, stop! It trundled across the floor, getting faster and faster, and bumped straight into the door. Crash! The lid came off, and something flew out of the tin, up into the air, and landed at Old Bear's feet. It was a bun. The toys looked from Old Bear to the drum tin. There were all the birthday buns lying in a heap. So that's where they went, laughed Bramwell Brown. He picked up the buns and carefully arranged them on the tin lid. You decorated my bun tin, little bear, and I didn't recognize it. Bramwell presented the buns to old bear. Happy birthday, he said, as all the other toys clapped and cheered. Old bear took a bite out of one of the buns. Mmm, thank you, he said. They're lovely. Now you must all have one. When they'd eaten the buns, Old Bear put the lid back onto the empty tin and lifted it up for Little Bear. I think your drum will sound even better now it isn't full of birthday buns, he said. And he was right. There he is. And my father played maracas with the Beatles. <laughs> and innocent, don't they? Who'd think they would do this? Or this? 
And who would imagine that they could get into scrapes like this? Could they do this? Oh, just watch them. Mondays at five past four on CITV. Sooty and Co. I couldn't believe these new thin nappies. They stretch and keep my daughter Rebecca really dry. These new Pampers Ultra Thin Stretch are fantastic. Before, with the children I've looked after, as they moved around, I've sometimes seen nappies start to gap and leak. Then you get a wet tummy. New Pampers Ultra Thin Stretch have a stretchy waistband and stretchy sides. They're designed to be better at gently hugging and moving with your baby to help prevent gaps and leaks. And with the new Ultra Core, they absorb so much better than before that they're the driest thin Pampers ever. These new stretchy Pampers are just such a snug fit. There's less gapping and great dryness. So now nothing stops Rebecca having fun. New Pampers Ultra Thin Stretch. The driest thin Pampers ever for drier, happier babies. A scorcher review today, the Power Tracks truck. One of the toughest 4x4s available. On and off-road handling is remarkable due to its monster tyres. And it's available in four metallic colours with personal decals as standard. The price, only an unbelievable eight tokens from Kellogg's Corn Flakes. These are the greatest hits of 94. 40 top 10 hits are specially compiled to make this the greatest double album of the year. Classic number one from Take That, Stiltskin and D-Ream. Plus the current hits with R. Kelly. It's unbeatable. 40 brilliant hits and they're all top 10 monsters. Together they are the greatest hits of 94 from Telstar. By the pool, two, she's a twirling ballerina. Cool. Three, she's a princess dancing with Ken. Ooh. Three looks, Bobby, three looks in one. Astro Fun. For Galactic Fun, the turn of this world, it's tune in every Thursday at 5 past 4 and join the Foxwoods down at Astro Farm on CITV. Welcome to Wednesday CITV. Is it a castle in the air? Yes, it's a castle in the air. Flags are flying, plain to see. Alphabet castle A, B, C. With old King Alpha. And young Queen Bet and flags are flying the alphabet. Alphabet castle, alphabet castle, alphabet castle, A, B, C. Hmm. You know, some clouds look just like fish. Fish swimming in the air. Oh, and look at that cloud. That is a whale of a cloud. I'll see what else I can see in the sky. Um, oh, well, nothing much at the moment. Hmm. <laughs> Hooks in the sky? Why? Oh, what are they here for? Betty? Hmm. I wonder where they've come from. A giant's castle in the air, perhaps. Ooh, or maybe a giant spaceship from somewhere out mm. of space. But what are they fishing for? Mm, no idea, King Alpha. Wait a minute. Maybe they're fishing for compliments. You know, nice things being said about them. Mm. Oh, let's just give it a try. Oh, you beautiful hooks. Of all the hooks I've seen in the world, you're the hookiest. Oh, well, maybe not. I'll go off and try and find something else. Mm. They need something to hang on them. 
My clothes, perhaps. Well, they can't have them, but they could have my crown. How's that? Hmm. Let's have a look. Hmm, what's in here? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. This one? <laughs> oh, well, give it a try. Hooks in the air. What are you after? Is it tears or is it laughter? Is it laughter? No, neither. Hooks in the air. Why are you there? It's not jewels that are dear. That much is clear. Very hooks in the air. Why have you come? Is it food you want? I'll make you some. Alphabet letters. Ooh. Lots and lots of letters. I usually put them in King Alpha spaghetti. Now, which one shall I use? Oh, yes. The letter T, R, E, and another E. That spells the word tree. If all the trees were made of spaghetti, and all their fruit were made of spaghetti too, there'd be peach etty and plums etty. And the odd apple etty or two. The letter F A R and M. That's the word farm. If all the farms were made of spaghetti, and all their animals were made of spaghetti too, there'd be Pigs Etty and chickens Etty and the odd sheep Etty or two. Mm -hmm. An S, the letter E and A. That's the word C. If all the C was made of spaghetti and all the things that lived in it too, there'd be mackerel etty and octopus etty and the odd crab etty or maybe two. <laughs> well, let's give these letters a try. Maybe these are what the hooks are fishing for. Here we are. One bag for you and another for you. I wonder where King Alpha's got to. He might have gone down to Alphabet Street. Let's have a look through my Betty scope. Oh, let's see. Oh, yes. Mm, well, there's definitely something going on down in Alphabet Street. Something very fishy. Max and Lola are going fishing today. Whoa! That was the one that got a worry. And you know what they'll say when they get back. Oh, you should have seen the one that got away. No, no you should have seen the one. No, you should have seen the one that got away. No, no that got away. No, no that got away. No, no it was enormous. How much did it weigh? That well, it's hard away. to say, really. That got away. Oh, you should have seen the one that got away. You should have seen the one. Yeah. You should have seen the one that got away. That got away. 
say. Mm, what a catch, I know, but he wouldn't play. Oh, you should have seen the one that got... Seen the one. You should have seen the one that got away. 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 You should have seen the one that got away. You should have seen the one that got away. Oh, that's given me an idea. Let's try these on the hooks. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes! You know what those hooks are going to say when they get back up there? Oh, you should have seen the one that got away. No, no you should have seen the one. Yeah. You should have seen the one that got away. Yeah. That got away. Yeah. That got away. That got away. Is it a castle in the air? Yes, it's a castle in the air. Flags are flying, plain to see. Alphabet castle A, B, C. Alphabet castle. Alphabet castle. Alphabet castle A, B, C. So watch now. Oh, hello, you lot. I'm just mixing up some cake mix to make a yummy fruit cake. <laughs> hello, Wizardora. Oh, what are you doing? Hello, Tatty. I'm mixing up a fruit cake. Oh, but it looks all soft and gooey. Well, that's because I haven't finished mixing it yet. Now I've got to put it in the oven. Look, it's all soft and creamy. But a fruit cake's all hard and crumbly. Well, so will this one be once I've put it in the oven and cooked it? Oh, Tatty, please can you go and see if my bag of mixed fruits over by the oven? Tatty, have you found that mixed fruit yet? I can't find it, Wizardora. Oh, what have I done with it? Oh, where did I put it? Oh. oh, diddle! I've broken my wooden spoon. Now what can I use? It's the only one I had. A fork! That's what you need. Oh, yes. Actually, a fork might do it. I'll just go and fetch it then. Oh, thanks, Tatty. While you're doing that, I'll look for that bag of mixed fruit. Now, where did I put it? Oops. Oh. I do wish that certain people would respect other certain persons' personal living space and not dump their old rubbish in that person's said space. Hangle, that's my mixed fruit bag. And it's empty. Exactly. <laughs> Draw people. Here we are. Tatty, what's that for? For stirring your cute fake. <laughs> I mean, stirring your fruit cake. Uh, I'm afraid not, Tatty. It's a bit too big, and even if I could fit it in the bowl, it would make everything come out all lumpy. Oh, but if you really want to help me, you could go down to Stan's and get me a new wooden spoon and a huge big bag of mixed fruit. And you could also get me... So, you want a new wooden spoon, a huge big bag of mixed fruit, and... Shh! I don't want anyone else to know about that. Oh, Tatty, don't forget this. <gasps> Whoops. And uh, while you're at Stan's, I think you'd better get some wool and we'll try and fix your trousers. <laughs> Thanks, Wizardora. And I thought it was going to be so simple just to bake a cake. <laughs> oh, hello, Tatty. Well, you've been doing some gardening. Hello, Stan. Uh, no, this was for Wizardora to mix her stir with. <laughs> I mean, stir her mix with. 
What on earth was she mixing? Cement? No, she's taking a bake. I mean, baking a cake. Why is she using a garden fork to cake a bake? I mean, bake a cake. She's not. She's using cake mix. I see. Yeah. Right, look, let's start again, shall we? <clears throat> Morning, Tati. Oh. Oh, me? Yeah, no, no, all right, forget it, Tati, forget it. Look, what can I get for you? A bag of fruit spoons, please. A bag of fruit spoons? Yes, and some mixed wood. Yeah. Look, Tati, you don't mean a bag of mixed fruit and a wooden spoon, do you? Don't I? Do I? Yes, that's right, a bag of mixed fruit and a wooden spoon. Right, then. That, that, that thing just bit me. Right. That couldn't bite you. That's a cheese grater. Well, it wasn't very great to me. Well, that's because you shouldn't rub your finger over. It's very rough and sharp. It's used for making big pieces of cheese into small pieces of cheese. Oh, but it's, it's full of holes. <laughs> I mean, full of holes. Yes, well, that's so that when you, uh, when you take the soft cheese and rub it over the rough and bumpy surface, the cheese that you're cutting can escape. Oh. If I was sliding over that thing, I'd want to escape. Yeah, quite. Right, well, I'll get what you want. That is, if I can trust you not to touch anything else. Ooh. The uh, bag of mixed fruit, was that a large one or a small one? The, uh, um, ooh, um... Uh, you haven't hurt yourself again, have you? Mm. Now, you won't get the powder off like that. It's too powdery and too clingy. Well, it doesn't feel clingy. It feels very nice. Like what and coal. <laughs> I mean, cotton wool. Yes, well, that's because it is so fine that it sticks. Now, you're going to have to wash it off with some salt. Uh, the uh, bag of mixed fruit, was that a large one or a small one? Ooh, uh, none of those, Stan. Medium, then. Nope. Nope, not that either. A big one. That was it. A big one. <laughs> Slippy dippy. <laughs> oh. Now what's gone wrong? It, it, it was the soap. The soap? It just dived straight out of my hands. And then I chased it across the floor, but it escaped. And I hanged my bed. <laughs> I mean, banged my head on the counter. And I've just remembered. Well, I'm surprised you've forgotten so quickly. Forgotten what? Well, that the soap is so slippy. I haven't. You said that you just remembered. That's right. Yep, yeah, but I'll... Uh, I just remembered that Wizardora wants some secret seething. <laughs> I mean, something secret. Oh, great, Tatty. You got my wooden spoon and my big bag of mixed fruit. Yes, and the... Shh! That's a surprise. Right. I'll just put this huge big bag of mixed fruit by the oven while I finish mixing my fruit cake. There. D. <laughs> if I'm not very much mistaken, someone's going to be in for a big surprise any moment now. Now, while I'm waiting, I'll fix Tatty's trousers. Have you got the wool, Tatty? Oh, Tatty, that's wire wool. You need lamb's wool. Wire wool's used for shining metal, not repairing trousers. It's too rough. Well, maybe I can use it to shine the big sign I'm about to hang up then. Well, what sign's that, Hangle? Oh, yes, Hangle, I wanted a word about that. Oh, you did, did you? If you're about to say sorry, then I'll accept your... Good gallop early, Kinney's cash and French furs took... <laughs> oh, I'm not sorry, Hangle. I know some little... Oh, 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 Hot chilli peppers and it jolly well serves you... One would like to have happened is this horse just to tie up a little bit so he... Promise never to touch things you shouldn't ever again. We promise, we promise. All right then, you can have some lemon... <laughs> <laughs> Is that better? <laughs> we adore her, we adore her Doing things in her very special way We adore her, nothing's
Zebra had been giving the toys rides in her little red cart. All morning she trotted up and down the room, pulling one toy at a time from the sofa to the door and back again. My legs are rather tired, she said, as Sailor climbed down from the cart. I think that had better be the last go. But I haven't had my turn yet, cried Rabbit, who was waiting at the starting point. Couldn't we just do one more trip? Zebra was about to reply when Little Bear ran into the room. Beep, 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 he shouted. Why are you beeping all over the place? asked Duck. I'm a hooter, said Little Bear breathlessly. Bramble said I could be one if I ran in front. In front of what? asked Sailor, looking all around. The car, of course, said Little Bear. What car? asked Duck. But just then, something big and red and driven by Bramble Brown whizzed through the door. It rattled across the room towards them and gradually slowed down, finally coming to a halt right in front of Little Bear. I suppose this is it, said Duck. Yes, said Little Bear proudly. And look, it's even got headlights. He pointed to two soup spoons sticking out of the bonnet. Those were my idea. Old Bear walked all round the car. He prodded the cardboard bodywork and examined the wheels. It's very good, he said. It must have taken a long time to build. Ages, said Bramwell. But we thought Zebra would be pleased. She won't get tired pulling everyone in her cart now, and they can all ride in the car. Zebra didn't look at all pleased. But I like giving people rides in my cart, she said. It was only my legs that were tired. Well, you can have a rest now, said Little Bear, patting the bonnet of the car, because we'll all be whizzing around in this. And you can even have a ride yourself, said Rabbit. Hmm, that will be fun, said Zebra doubtfully. Rabbit peered under the car. How does it work, he asked. With this, said Little Bear, pointing to a large key, it winds up a rubber band which makes the wheels go round. That's clever, said Old Bear, isn't it, Zebra? But Zebra didn't answer. Slowly and sadly, she was dragging her cart across the room to a little corner by the window. I might as well park it here, she said, as nobody needs it anymore. The other toys were all too busy admiring the new arrival to notice Zebra. Little Bear picked up a building block. I'm going to build it a garage, he said. That's a good idea, said Bramwell. The car's paintwork will stay nice and clean in a garage. Can I have a drive now, asked Rabbit who couldn't wait any longer. Of course, said Bramwell. Just wind it up and away you go. Rabbit started to turn the key round and round. Suddenly, the car began to move. How do you stop it? called Rabbit as he bounded along trying to catch up. You can't, cried Bramwell. You just steer it into something soft. B but I'm not in it, puffed Rabbit, still running along behind the car. Then you'll just have to let it wind down, called Old Bear. It shouldn't take too long. But Bramble had had an idea. He scrambled up onto the sofa, waited for a moment, and then, just as the car whizzed past, he jumped right into the driver's seat. Well done, cried Little Bear. Bramble grabbed the steering wheel, and with a quick turn, he steered straight into a cushion. Thud. Rabbit bumped into the back of the car and Little Bear's headlights flew out of their holes and landed with a clatter on the floor. Old Bear held Rabbit to his feet. It's quite clear to me, he said, that this car needs brakes. It's all right if someone's driving it, said Bramwell, picking up the headlights. Then they can steer. From inside the car, 
muttered Duck, not running along behind. Can I have a go now? asked Ruff. Of course, said Bramble. You be the passenger and I'll drive. He pushed the spoon headlights back into their holes and Old Bear turned the key round and round. Bramble and Ruff started to move. Faster and faster they drove, to the left and to the right, bumping and rattling as they went. Bramble waved to the other toys. This is fun, he called. You must try it. But Ruff was staring straight ahead. Look out, he cried. It's Cat. She's in the way. Cat looked up sleepily to see the car rushing towards her. She was just thinking that she probably ought to move when Bramble suddenly swerved to the left and missed her by a whisker. He didn't miss Little Bear's brick wall, though, and with a crash, the half-built garage landed all over the car. Oh, no, cried Little Bear. I shall have to start again now. Bramble and Ruff climbed out of the pile of blocks. You are going too fast, said Old Bear. It isn't safe to drive like that indoors. I think you should have someone walking in front of the car to warn everyone that it's coming. I'll do that, said Little Bear, who decided that garage building wasn't such a good idea. You'll need a red flag to carry, said Duck, to show that the car is dangerous. I'll use my trousers, said Little Bear, sitting down to take them off. With his trousers tied to a pencil, Little Bear practised walking up and down while the other toys pushed the car out of the pile of bricks. Bramble examined it closely. Just a few dents, he said. I'm sure it would be fine. Come on, Ruff, in you get. Uh, I think I'd uh, rather run behind this time, said Ruff. So Bramble climbed back into the car. Could somebody wind it up? he called. Rabbit went to turn the key and then stopped. It's gone, he cried. Who's taken it? Nobody had taken it. It must have fallen out, said Old Bear. They all stared at the jumble of coloured bricks. It could be right at the bottom, said Duck. In fact, it probably is. Little Bear stopped marching up and down. I think I know something that might help, he said, rushing off. When he returned, he was carrying a big red horseshoe-shaped magnet. Well done, little bear, cried Bramwell. The key is metal, so it will stick to the magnet, and then we can pull it out. While the other toys moved the building bricks around, little bear prodded about with the magnet. A nail and a paper clip stuck to the end, but nothing bigger. Bramwell moved an extra big block, and suddenly, with a bing, there was the key hanging on tightly to the magnet. Hurrah! cried the other toys. You found it, little bear. As a reward, said old bear, I think you should have the next ride in the car. I'll walk in front with the red flag. Very excited, little bear clambered into the back of the car, behind Bramble. Then Rabbit turned the key. The car began to move forward. Bum -ti -bum -bum -ti -bum. It's not a very smooth ride, is it? said Little Bear in a rather shaky voice. It isn't usually this bumpy, said Bramble. I think something must be wrong. As he spoke, there was an extra big bump, then a wobble and a crunching noise, and then the wheel fell off. The car tipped sideways and Bramble and Little Bear fell out. Oh dear, said Old Bear. The red flag didn't help that time, did it? Bramble stood up and looked at the rather crumpled three-wheeled car. I was a bit uncomfortable about the Van Dykes eyeing us when we got undressed. Something safer, he suggested. Something that goes quite slowly, can stop easily and doesn't need a key. Thoughtfully. And she had to sing that very sad thing from the Messiah. Asked Little Bear, what is it? I'll get it for you, said Old Bear, and he hurried away. He had with him but Zebra and her little red cart. Little Bear looked at Zebra and clapped his paws. Of course, he cried. She doesn't need brakes or a key, and she never goes too fast. Are your legs still tired, Zebra? Zebra shook her head. While you were all driving the car, she said, I had a nice little rest. 
Now I'm ready for a whole afternoon of rides. So, let me see, who's going to have the first go? Me! cried everyone at once. Twenty past four. Where? CITV. So don't miss it. Right. Right. You win. Mm. Mrs. Jessup, leaving. I think she might. If they can't see what's going on, I'm not sure I want to be part of that school anymore. That's later. The touch of silk can have a magical effect. Smooth and creamy galaxy milk chocolate swirling around whole hazelnuts to create new galaxy hazelnut. Why have cotton when you can have silk? New galaxy hazelnut. A Scorcher review today, the Power Tracks truck, one of the toughest 4x4s available. On and off-road handling is remarkable due to its monster tyres, and it's available in four metallic colours with personal decals as standard. The price, only an unbelievable eight tokens from Kellogg's Corn Flakes. To make Menu Master's World Cuisine Chicken Tikka Makanwala, we use only chickens that have attained perfection. Each grain of rice is polished on maiden's knees. The vegetable curry must match the magnificent colour of the hills of Tak Tak. Every bhaji is individually woven by yetis. World Cuisine Chicken Tikka Makanwala is so delicious, thousands exploded with happiness. Only far-fetched meals pass the bird's eye. Have you heard the news? Huggies are changing. Pure or perfect stone. Also... Huggies now have a new... ...way to help stop leaks better and keep your baby's skin even drier. And you can move more easily than in ordinary bulky nappies. New Huggies, now even drier. Discover the delicious combination of fruit, almonds, and hazelnuts in Galaxy Double Nut and Raisin. Why have cotton when you can have silk? Avenger penguins! Have you heard what they're saying? What a fine figure of a penguin! Rocky, the wittiest penguin in the Western world! His mum. Wow, wish I could do that! Any kidding? That's enough. The bu <clears throat> uh, watch Avenger Penguins Fridays at four. But that's uh, smashing. Uh, there would be twelve of those, of course. I couldn't believe these new thin nappies. They stretch and keep my daughter Rebecca really dry. Before, with the children I've looked after, as they moved around, I've sometimes seen nappies start to gap and leak. Then you get a wet tummy. New Pampers Ultra Thin Stretch have a stretchy waistband and stretchy sides. They're designed to be better at gently hugging... ...exhibited and at the Royal Academy in 1784, and this... ...with the new Ultra Core, they absorb so much better than before that they're the driest thin Pampers ever. These new... ...it's less gapping and great dryness. So now nothing stops Rebecca having fun. New Pampers Ultra Thin Stretch. The driest thin pampers ever for drier, happier babies. A scorcher review today, the Power Tracks truck, one of the toughest 4x4s available. On and off-road handling is remarkable due to its monster tyres, and it's available in four metallic colours with personal decals as standard. The price, only an unbelievable eight tokens from Kellogg's Corn Flakes. If you're not allowed to whistle, sing or dance, a silence like this can be eerie. If you let it, it could put you in a trance. <laughs>
Association goes on a goodwill mission today to Belgium, co host Let's see, you were doing 140 in the 35 zone. Side swiped three cars. I believe this bumper belongs to you. Destruction. Carnage. Oh, and you didn't use your turn signal, son. I'm gonna have to write you up for that last one. Stunt Race FX with the Super FX chip for multi-dimensional visual weirdnessity, only on the Super NES. Could this be there's something wrong? You'll agree. It's no hot dog at all. It is shaped like a ball. Where's Campbell's hot doggers? Did aliens come down and make everything round? What's with my underwear? They made balls out of frankfurters. Those rotten shaped perverters say these Campbell's hot doggers taste good. In three flying sauces. Hey, they're from Campbell's. We knew that they would. The new Fisher-Price Doodle Table has so many ways to be creative and such a neat way to clean up. No wonder Polly and Wally doodle all the day. The Doodle Table, new from Fisher-Price. Every day's a cartoon day on CITV. Socks are falling down. Well, don't wear socks. Eh? Oh. <laughs> and he jumped out of his skin then. What was that yeah. thing? Hey, oh, it's my personal attack alarm. I'm sorry about that. It's very loud, isn't it? Yeah. Ah! Turn it off! What? Turn it off! What? Turn it off! Turn, turn it off! I can't hear. I'll turn it off. There we Ooh. go. What you need an alarm for anyway, you wussy? You're a wolf. Well, you never know, do you? No, you're definitely a wolf. I've seen the label. Oh. Hey, no, this world we live in today, it isn't always that jolly. No, it's not going to be that peaceful from now on either, is it? In fact, <clears throat> it can be jolly dangerous. I purchased this for peace of mind, and I, for one, feel much safer with one of these strapped about my person. Shall I, uh, shall I take you through it? I've been through it already, thank you. Because it's got lots of different settings, you see. Oh, has it? Yeah, you can switch it to manual or automatic. It was on automatic when you attacked me just then. I didn't attack you. I hardly think reaching for a pen constitutes an attack. Now, in that particular instance, it was on the setting, hello, he's a bad one, and no mistake. I'll tell you what, I'll set it again. All right, there you go. Now, then, would you attack me, please? My pleasure. No! <laughs> 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 Hang on, hang on, bro, bro. <laughs> what, what, what's this? Eh? Hey, that's, that's the battery. It must have fallen <laughs> out. What's it was yeah. yeah. Right, uh, yeah well, let me know. Come here, then. Uh, uh, there we go. Pop it back in. That's the idea. Oh, give me your money, then. Ah, give me, me your money. No, wait, 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 wait. Let me pop my battery darling, back in. Where's your purse? Where's your purse? Oh, stop it. I can't <laughs> do it if you're attacking me. What, Can is this what you're going to do, then? You're going to reason with an attacker, are you? When he's attacking you, eh? Why don't you pop your battery back in? Hey? Dear, oh, dear. And that's not even its most sensitive setting. At its most sensitive setting, you've only got to... 
Look as if you might do something and it goes off. Come in here. You're not going to hit me, are you? Come on, no, I'm not. Oh. I want to look at something. Yeah, what? Look in the paper there, look. See that advert? Smash him. I might apply for that. <laughs> Full of interest, aren't you? I could do with a few, Bob. Eh? Eh? I could... Do you mind? This is personal. <laughs> Two more applicants to see you, Mr. Spunt. Thank you, Miss Underhand. Send the next one in. Mr. Spunt will see you now. Oh, Mr. Um... Mr. Room. You see, mysteriously, many of our exhibits have been disappearing. We tried to solve this problem last year by employing a state-of-the-art alarm system. And this seemed to do the trick. However, last year, the alarm system went off. Miss Underhand was very quickly on the scene, but there was nothing to report. However, sadly, artifacts are being taken once again, and we feel the need to advertise for another night watchman. Another one? Oh, there'll be two, then. Who's got the job at the moment? No one. The previous incumbent left some months ago. Was it him that was pinching things? It's a long night. The night spent alone after hours in the museum. The man who had the job before lost his marbles. I'm not surprised. Fiddly things marbles, aren't they? They roll everywhere, yeah? I don't expect he found it dark with the lights off. And...